Most people in life have a history, and that history is very obvious to the person who has the history. But when you're trying to confirm if someone is something, you look at their history. You ask them to demonstrate a lesson. You ask them to do something spontaneous. You ask them to show you what they can do, but they have to have a computer to do that. I can edit videos, but I have to have my software. Someone kept getting in and out of my vehicle in when I lived in Indiana, stealing my software. I had a Sony Vegas $900 software that I purchased with my own money, and I carried it with me because someone kept hacking my computer and interfering with it. And so what I found was that then I could buy the upgrade. And I bought the upgrade, and I had notebooks, blue notebooks, medium blue notebooks in my storage that had all the passcodes and all the passwords to everything I own. Who the fuck has my notebooks? That person's been deleting my online accounts, and I had shitloads of artwork at Vistaprint, and I can't get into that. Why is that? A man has to go forward in life, and I had siblings that refused to help me. Literally refused to help me do the things I need to do. So don't ask me if I have good relationships with my siblings. I don't. Each and every one of them has lied, stolen, and cheated from me. So why the fuck do you think I'm going to go with them anywhere? I have one sibling that was trusted most of my life, and I have some forgiveness for her. And she did come and help a little bit a while ago, but I gave her a shitload of things to take home. And I said, put this in my storage unit. But I have another sibling that without my consent, without my rights considered by either the company, the Fishers, uh, you store it, or m my me, move my property. They weren't the names on that contract. And they weren't the backup name either. I had a backup name of my legal heir on my property. In other words, if I can't pay, you call this person. And if that storage unit called that person, then they had a fucking obligation to call me and to tell me what was going on with my property. Not call the person who happened to be paying the bill while I was in struggle. That is immoral. That is illegal. I have acquiesced that my siblings allegedly have moved my property, but it took a shitload for me of negotiation and cursing to get my sibling to tell me where the fuck my property was. She was trying to blackmail me with my fucking property. She had no fucking right to take it. Now I'm not a vindictive man, but if I don't find every fucking thing from Japan and every fucking thing of my books in that fucking property storage unit, I'm going to sue her into the fucking ground. I have a very important selection of my Japanese language books that I purchased overseas that caught me, cost me a mint and a shitload of time. I also have a one-of-a-kind unique uh, set of books that you can now buy on Amazon, but at the time when I bought them, it took a hell of a lot for me to get those uh, Japanese bookstore ladies, and I know the exact name of the company where I got them, to order them. So on the back of those books, they're going to have yen noted, not American dollars. So here's the thing. When a man has a collection, it's his. When a man has antiques, they're his. When a man has a kakijuku, it's his. When a man has a hagoita, it's his. When a man has a shitload of feroshki with samurai on it, they're his. When a man has handkerchief with those things on it, they're his. Not some fucking officer who thought he'd confiscate a Japanese, um, uh, a Japanese traveler's property and take it home for him.